Yes, second week in a row for another project with Bella the Bowler. This week we are going to tackle this range hood vent which is sun baked and dried and chipped and cracked and ugly looking. So this should be a lot of fun, maybe. One of our first steps will be to get some power out to the trailer because we are going to need to drill out those old rivets. So we'll get started on that. Trusty old extension cord. So I'll plug the trailer in here, and then we can plug the drill in here, and that's a good way to test this exterior outlet and make sure the electricity in Bella is working before we head out next weekend. Right, like in the middle, one bigger? Maybe one size bigger in the world's messiest drill box kit. Yeah, we'll see if that comes out then. All right, commence drilling. One down. Is it? It's still in there. It twisted. Oh, okay. It's loose. We just gotta pry it off to keep it off. Okay. Kind of helps that this side is baking in the sun. A lot of this sealant is already feeling pretty loose. Might just break it. <laughs> Good thing that was the old one. It's like paper thin. Now I'm going to ask what's probably an obvious question, but we did check to make sure the new vent fits, right? We have to adjust it a little bit. We'll have to adjust it. It's the only one they have now. Oh boy. <laughs> and on that note, I'm going to pop into the Dan O'Can Garage and see if we can actually find the new vent that we purchased last year to make sure we have something to replace the now totally destroyed old vent. Found it. New louvered hood vent in colonial white. It's going to be as close as we can to matching colors. And in case you didn't note, we have crossed the Dan O'Can line. That point in any project where you have reached the point of no return and you have to go forward, there is no returning back to your original state. Yeah, we need to drill those out a little bit. Yeah, I think we need to get a bigger drill bit and drill the heads off those rivets a bit more. seems to have weakened weakened the head enough now that they're really quite loose there we go we went up one more size of drill bit and rivet popped right off I can't even there it is rivet came right off so have to repeat that about five more times Of course, having to do this in a manner that we don't damage the fiberglass so that we can put new rivets in with the new uh, range hood vent. So there we go. We went one drill bit larger again. Those top three came out right away. I need to hit that 
That one needs a little more effort. But we're getting there with removing the old range hood vent. So there we go. We've made good progress there in cleaning off the old silicone and putty, getting out the old rivets. Judging from the number of holes along here, this is not the first time that stove vent has been replaced. Dry fit it in and see how it's going to go. Might need to put a little duct tape around to hold this metal back. Because it's like flexing and catching. Yeah, it's getting caught on that metal in there. So what we have uncovered is that the new vent is significantly deeper than what the old vent was. It looks like they had cut off the old vent. So Emily has carefully made some marks along this one showing how deep the old one was. And we're going to get out the knockoff Dremel and cut this one down to size. So after a good start, as you can see there, the cutoff wheel on the knockoff Dremel burst apart and shattered. So we have gone to plan B, which does not involve a trip to Canadian Tire. And we're going to get out the heavy duty cutoff wheel from the real drill and use that. You'll have to hold this. Okay. So I'm going to hold the base here while Emily comes in with a power drill. What can possibly go wrong? All right, there's the first cut. No eye injuries to report yet. Yeah, there she goes. That's all cut up. So no matter which company we bought this from, I highly doubt their return policy would be generous enough to take it back now. And we're just trying to dry fit it again here. <laughs> None of the holes match up. Let's yeah. see. We'll just silicone over it. Yeah, we'll have to silicone because these holes don't line up quite. But, okay, well. Just for, before, okay, I was going to say before you pull it out, let's turn the vent on and see how it works. But that ship sailed. Okay, so we're just messing with the final dry fitting here. So turn it on and let's see if it actually vents properly. Oh yeah, yep. Yeah. Flap opened as expected and there's a bit of air coming out. So it's working. That's good. So it's fitting in quite nicely. It's working. So now what we're going to do is we're going to get the small drill bit out. and We're going to have to drill new holes. Another hole set here for where all the new bits are going to fit. And then uh, we'll put some butyl along the back, fit her in, rivet it in place, seal around it, and call it good. Goggle up for safety. Safety first, kids. Now we just have to hope that when we fit it back in again with the butyl on the back, those holes all still line up. Okay, there we go. We got the butyl along the back. It's not beauty beautiful, or it's not beauty butyl, but it's going to be along the wall. No one's going to see it anyway. And now we haven't used the rivet gun since last fall when we did our door lock replacement video. So we're trying to remember how exactly we use it, but I'm sure we'll figure it out. And then it kicks out the end. That sounds vaguely. It takes three presses. Okay. Well, it sounds vaguely familiar. Let's see how this goes. So 
So I assume like most things we'll do one corner, then the opposite corner. That can't be right. That's so short. Maybe is it like this? No. That's not gonna go all the way through the hill. So the rivets we have on hand are too short. So yes, we have to make the trip to Canadian Tire. Which isn't the worst thing because I wanted to get some new marker lights anyway. So we'll see if they have those in stock even if we don't do that project today. Off we go. Well, this is the place to be on a long weekend. Parking lot's crazy. Okay, good, good. So many options. Ow! My legs are sore from hiking. <laughs> yep. So back from Canadian Tire, armed with some longer rivets. Now we're going to try this again. Okay, so after a little bit of a delay here in that I went to use the rivet gun and a rivet got stuck in it, but Emily has done some major reassembly of the rivet gun and it's tried test rivet out here on the truck seemed to work. So we're going to attempt to once again, now that we have the longer rivets, re-rivet that range hood vent onto the side of the trailer. And as you can see, it's clouded up significantly. So now we're kind of racing the clock to get things sealed up before it rains. Uh oh, because oh, we put the putty there. Yeah, you're going to have to push oh, yeah. through the putty. Yep. Yeah. Okay, well, we were premature in putting the drill bits away because it would appear the new rivets, being with a longer reach, also need longer or bigger holes. Okay. On to attempt number so many I've forgotten. But we're getting closer with every passing attempt, I think. Man, I keep nicking the thing. I don't know either, but all right. All right, we're back to where we started. One, two. Okay, I can try. Small tool. Uh, so for those keeping track at home, we now have it riveted in place. However, for whatever reason, whether it's because these rivets are bigger or because we didn't get it reassembled quite right, it did not cut the rivets off. So now we're going to have to put the cutting wheel back on the drill and manually cut all 10 of these down. Grip on it.
There we go. So, it may not be professional, but it's on there. It's solid. Needs a little clean up here where we've got some marks and things, but at least it's not broken and sunbaked like the old one. Now we just gotta put some decor on the side here and call it good. Okay, so Emily's doing some polishing on that cap vent to clean it up a little bit. I'm putting the caulking in the caulking gun. We're using the Dicor cap sealant. So this is specifically designed for sidewall doors, windows, and vents and things. This is not the self-leveling stuff that you use on the roof. This is specifically designed for the sides. So never tried this product before, not a sponsor, but we're gonna give it a shot. This requires precision and finesse, hence why I'm watching, not doing. It's not I, I punctured it, didn't I? I see the product, but I, it's not really. Oh boy, hang on. I'm here for brute strength. <laughs> oh, it's very, it's thicker. It's like paste. Mm hmm. Hard to get out. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. This stuff's quite interesting. I mean, this is, it comes out, it's still pliable. It's almost a Play Doh consistency. Yeah. Interesting. All right, well, it's done. That's a wrap. It looks all right. Could be worse, and it didn't go as easy as I thought, but it also didn't go nearly as bad as it could have. True, that's a win.